Unlimited Psychic Squad begins by showing a man named Hubo Kiyosuke, a member of the Pandra criminal organization, is standing on top of a golden tower. Then he threw himself into the middle of a group of policemen on guard. With agile movements, he was able to kill the police quickly. He destroyed the police tank and helicopter. After that, he surrendered himself to one of the police there. On the other hand, in prison, a man named Andy Hinamiya has a different eye color. He was fighting with one of the male inmates on the prison grounds. They were Asper users who got prisoned because their powers were not allowed in the area. Aspers were abilities that could control objects just by thinking about them. While the inmates were still fighting, suddenly, a police helicopter landed near them. Then it looks like Kiyosuke who got off the helicopter. When the warden came to greet him at the helicopter door, Kiyosuke underestimated him, making the warden angry. The warden stepped forward and hit Kiyosuke, saying he was an outcast Asper. <laughs> Hearing that Kiyosuke was angry, the police were preparing to attack him. Hinamiya immediately stopped the police, then Kiyosuke approached him to ask his name and said that his eyes were unique. When the warden snapped at him again, Kiyosuke got angry and lifted the helicopter without touching it. But because there was a device that could withstand his strength, the helicopter immediately fell. Finally, he was arrested. When they were inside the prison, Hinamiya and Kiyosuke chatted with each other. Hinamiya said that this prison is the grave of the Aspers because once they enter, there will be no way out again. Kiyosuke asked about the injured person's whereabouts after being hit by the helicopter debris earlier. Hinamiya replies that the person will be taken off the island for treatment. Hearing this, Kiyosuke smiled as if he was planning something. Hinamiya asked disdainfully why a child like Kiyosuke could join a dangerous organization. Hearing that question, Kiyosuke replied that he was the organization's leader. His words were greeted with laughter by Hinamiya who thought he was joking. Hinamiya also challenges him. He will join that organization if Kiyosuke can make him escape from this prison. Hearing this, Kiyosuke immediately agreed. When it was lunchtime, they went to the dining room. Kiyosuke approached Hinamiya at his dining table and gave some of the food to him. Because the food has been poisoned by the chef, Hinamiya, who didn't know that, immediately ate it up. After lunchtime was over, the fight between the prisoners started again. While Hinamiya was fighting, his stomach suddenly hurt and his body limped. Kiyosuke, who saw this, knew that the poison was acting on his body. Then the police came to take him to the same place the previous person was treated. When Hinamiya opened his eyes, he was surprised to see that he was already in the hospital with Kiyosuke with the condition that the medical personnel there had died. Kiyosuke replied that this incident was his plan to escape from the prison. Kiyosuke invites Hinamiya into another room. Arriving in the room, Kiyosuke immediately took a gun and fired it all over the room. Then a little girl named Yugi reappeared with several policemen from behind the curtain. He attacked the police and saved her, locked in the glass. It turns out that Yugi Ri is Kiyosuke's assistant. Then the warden came to meet them with a monster from the research results of the Asper cells in prison. After it was discovered, it turned out that the prison was a place for experiments using Asper's body cells. The monster not only has telekinesis ability or can control objects by thinking about them but can read minds, telepathy, and others. But Kiyosuke is no match for the monster because he still has a hidden power. Then he was ready to fight the monster. At the beginning of the fight, Kiyosuke was a little overwhelmed, then Hinamiya helped him. A strange thing happened when the monster wanted to attack Hinamiya because its power couldn't touch him. It made Kiyosuke and Yugi re feel surprised. When Kiyosuke wanted to take Yugiri out, he saw that there was a test kit in her hand. Seeing that, he was angry and immediately turned his limiter until its power became unlimited. <laughs> Instantly the monster was easily defeated. Then Kiyosuke attacked the police there and destroyed the prison. Kiyosuke took Hinamiya and Yugiri to his camouflage ship. After the ship appeared, many people were waiting for him. Then the prisoners there were happy, and all were released. Meanwhile, Hinamiya was asked to keep his promise to join Kiyosuke. The ship immediately left the prison. While the ship was sailing, Hinamiya was seen calling a man. He was a USEI agent conducting reconnaissance with Pandra members because he had planned this from the start. Kiyosuke introduced Hinamiya to some of his ship's members inside the ship. When a hamster attacks Hinamiya with a spur power, he can withstand it. 
and it made the members of the ship who saw it surprised. Not only that, but if they approached him, they would feel dizzy, nauseous, and have a toothache. Then Kiyosuke asked Yugiri to read Hinamiya's mind but failed. <laughs> Hinamiya tried to extract information from the ship's members about the Pandora organization, but they kept quiet and kept it a secret. On that ship, they often asked Hinamiya to do some tasks such as sweeping. Hinamiya immediately contacted his boss to ask if the organization was very dangerous. His boss said they are a dangerous organization because they have been caught doing illegal acts several times. His boss asked Hinamiya to keep an eye on their movements. On the other hand, because some members of Kiyosuke can't trust Hinamiya, they ask him to carry out their plan to test Hinamiya. The next day, Kiyosuke, his members, and Hinamiya went to a city. There, they passed through a tunnel containing some food and drinks with the name of their organization Pandra on them. This confused Hinamiya as to why organizations like them put their names on food and beverage labels. Then a female member named Mamaji said that it was their motto, the Asper Mafia that everyone loved. Hearing those words, Hinamiya was even more confused. The smuggling of weapons makes him even more curious about who they really are. It turns out that they will use these weapons to transact with other mafias later at night. As they exit the tunnel and continue their journey, they are watched by another mobster. So, Magi had to step in to defeat them. He has the power of synthesis where he can control his body into the shape he wants, even as small as an atom. However, because of the many mafias that confronted Magi, his friends immediately came to help him, including Hinamiya who was still confused. As Hinamiya walked toward Magi, he watched their battle without sounding. It turned out to be the work of a man named Yoharu, a member of Kiyosuke who can manipulate sound, captures sound from one side and dumps it elsewhere. After they managed to defeat some of the mafias, it was revealed that the mafia that attacked Kiyosuke was from the Maldini family or the person they would deal with tonight. Just in case they betrayed them, Kiyosuke ordered Hinamiya to monitor them from afar and asked him to shoot the mafia if they betrayed them. Kiyosuke told Yoharu, one of his members, to catch their conversation and send it to Hinamiya. Then Hinamiya felt suspicious that this was just their plan to reveal his identity. Because if he couldn't shoot then, they would know his identity. He was forced to shoot. After Kiyosuke talked with the Mafia boss, it was revealed that he and the Mafia boss were the same age. They joined the military when they were assigned to World War II missions. Unlike the boss, Kiyosuke can maximize his power to keep himself looking young. Not long after, Kiyosuke ordered Hinamiya to shoot the Mafia boss. But because he was late in shooting the boss, Kiyosuke became their target. But strangely, one of the boss's subordinates immediately changed to look like Kiyosuke's face, so they shot each other. But suddenly, Kiyosuke and Magi appeared behind Hinamiya. He immediately gave the limiter necklace to Hinamiya. It turns out that the boss that Hinamiya shot earlier is a robot Kiyosuke uses to track them while the real boss was right under Hinamiya, where he was hiding when he was about to shoot. Turns out it was all Kiyosuke's plan so that the boss couldn't use his power to kill them secretly. As Kiyosuke knew, if Hinamiya was anxious, then his power would expand even more. And that was why the boss couldn't use his power. With an angry tone, while showing a gunshot mark on his forehead and mentioning the names of several of his friends who had died, Kiyosuke intended to take revenge and wanted to kill the boss. Then the battle between the strongest Aspurs ensued. Kiyosuke and the boss attacked each other until the battle was won by him. As a result of the battle, many buildings were badly damaged. Then they returned to the ship. Arriving at the ship, they made a party. Hinamiya became acquainted with some other members, namely a man named Fujiurayu and a woman named Kanu Mamaji. Then Kiyosuke approached Hinamiya to give him a drink. But what makes him confused is why the drink is a glass of milk, even though they are a group of dangerous organizations that people fear. In part 2, the anime begins by showing a kingdom called the Kingdom of Monaco. The kingdom is celebrating its anniversary known as the Blue Star Day celebration. In that kingdom, there is a princess named Sophie. She is an activist who tries to coexist with Aspurs. Because there are about 5% of the population has Asper power, Princess Sophie was afraid they would rebel if she didn't try to coexist with the Aspurs. At the celebration, she invites the Aspurs so they can mingle with other ordinary citizens. Then came two men who had just gotten off a limousine. They are named Minamoto and Sakaki. They are both members of an agency called Babel, 
where it is not known what the purpose of the organization is. But some think this organization aims to provide protection to Aspurs. They both entered the kingdom. They were surprised that Kiyosuke's organization was coming to the event. Then he easily answered because he was invited. When Kiyosuke and his friends leave, Sakaki stops Kiyosuke and forces him to tell him why they are here. Because Sakaki believes that an organization like Pandra won't come to this event without a purpose. But because Minamoto didn't want any fuss there, Sakaki let Kiyosuke go. After they left the event, Kiyosuke made a note that Pandra was there. Seeing the writing, the invited guests were immediately excited. Then Minamoto and Sakaki offered themselves to the palace to clean up the Pandra organization, but the palace refused their offer. But moments later, a guard came to the palace room to report that the Pandra organization had kidnapped Princess Sophie and brought her to their ship. After knowing this, the palace was willing to accept the offer from the two of them to help. Then Sakaki showed a flash he managed to take from Kiyosuke's pocket. On the other hand, Princess Sophie, who had woken up and was on Kiyosuke's ship, asked why they kidnapped her. Kiyosuke replied that they didn't even know because it was Yugiri who planned this, because she had a very strong feeling that something was going to happen. After Princess Sophie finds out that the Pandora organization is not as bad as she thought, she invites them to cooperate with her country. She wanted to use them to prove that her country accepted Asper's existence. But Kiyosuke refused because he was reminded of his past. After that, he left her to prepare for their organization's operations. On the other hand, Sakaki, still in the palace room, thinks that Kiyosuke kidnapped Princess Sophie to help her from being killed. But he still doubts this assumption because it seems impossible for Kiyosuke to be like that. Finally, they both decided to find out through the flash they got earlier. But when the flash is opened, they must finish a game first to get a clue. Then they played it. Meanwhile, on Kiyosuke's ship, Princess Sophie sat alone on a sofa. Then Yugiri came to bring her a drink and left immediately. As she was about to leave, Princess Sophie asked her to stay there to accompany her. Yugiri came back again and accompanied her there. In another room, Kiyosuke was seen talking to Hinamiya. Kiyosuke said that the reason for kidnapping Princess Sophie was to free her from the plan of killing her. He came to the celebration event to spy and find out who would kill her but failed. Suddenly, Yugiri and Princess Sophie came to Kiyosuke's room. She asked him for permission to take a walk outside. He plans to find the person who wants to kill Princess Sophie. At the same time, when Sakaki and Minamoto were finishing their game, suddenly a man who is the head of the palace entered to meet them. He said there were many Princess Sophies out there walking around. Turns out it was just hypnosis from Kiyosuke to lure the culprit out. Kiyosuke's plan was successful. The perpetrator was provoked so that Magi and Mamaji immediately killed him. But it turns out that one of the perpetrators is still alive and is currently listening to their conversation about Princess Sophie's current whereabouts from behind the wall. After the perpetrators found out where Princess Sophie was, he immediately ran away. It turned out that the conversation that Kiyosuke, Magi, and Mamaji had before was part of their plan to trick the man and the other members into going where they intended. Then, the members of the perpetrators immediately came and ambushed the location where they thought that Princess Sophie was hidden in that place. After they broke down the door and entered the house, they were surprised to see Kiyosuke. Then he instantly killed them. After that, he got the news that they were all just messengers from the perpetrator. On the other hand, Minamoto and Sakaki finally managed to win the game. But the contents of the Flash are only data reports on population changes and the budget of every minister of the Kingdom of Monaco. The royal party could not provide the data for the two to read. Seeing this, Minamoto wondered why all the data was in Kiyosuke's Flash. After he thought, he finally realized who the mastermind behind the murder was. But they thought they were too late because the mastermind had left the palace. On the other hand, Yugiri and Princess Sophie were walking outside with Hinamiya's assistance. Then, Yugiri asked her to take her to an orphanage building. Arriving there, she told her that this orphanage was where she used to live. Even she had seen Princess Sophie come there to help the orphanage. After Princess Sophie finds out, she asks Yugiri to stay in her country again and promises not to make her feel lonely. Then a strange man came up to them in the building. He asked Princess Sophie to stay away from Yugiri. Soon, Minamoto and some of his ministers came there. It turned out that the stranger was the real culprit. He pointed a gun at Princess Sophie and shot her. Luckily, Hinamiya managed to save her even though she was hit in the shoulder. The man wanted to kill Princess Sophie because he didn't want her to use the state budget to protect the Aspers. He considers all of that useless. According to him, the budget is more valuable if used to build technology or strengthen national defense. Then, when the man wanted to shoot Princess Sophie again, Yugiri unconsciously took out her power. Even now, she couldn't control her power. Soon, 
Kiyosuke came and immediately calmed her down. After that, he killed the culprit without touching her. <laughs> Princess Sophie was very grateful to Kiyosuke, Yugiri, and Hinamiya. Then they left her in the courtiers. Kiyosuke's ship plans to go to Japan whose destination is still unknown. On the other hand, Hinamiya reported to his boss that he still couldn't enter the ship's central room because they couldn't trust him. It turned out that Hinamiya's mission this time was to secure Pandra's important equipment on the ship, but he didn't even know what equipment he was referring to. He was ordered to immediately complete the mission because only his strength was suitable for this mission. Hinamiya immediately agreed. Soon after, the Babel group suddenly surrounded them to take Pandra's important items. Kiyosuke immediately ordered the captain to activate the room camouflage mode so they could not enter the center of the ship's room. It also made Hinamiya, who was trying to enter the room, fail. Then Fujiura caught Hinamiya and still didn't suspect him. They had to get out of there immediately with the attack on their ship. On the other hand, the ship's members were killed by three Esper girls. Then the three girls came to attack the rest of Kiyosuke's group. Even with their strength, Hinamiya and Fujiura couldn't fight it. At the same time, Mamaji and the other members called the Babel members to just give up. But suddenly, an Esper girl appeared in front of them. It made Kiyosuke very excited to meet her. After they faced each other and talked, it seemed that she was an old friend of him. But after that, they fought with equal strength. On the other hand, Hinamiya, with a hamster, was caught by one of the Asper girls. When she tries to read Hinamiya's mind, she is surprised that her psychometric abilities cannot be used on him. After learning their names were Aoi and Shio, Hinamiya realized that they were members of a special Asper from Japan called the Children. They then realized that he had the power to eliminate Asper's powers. After his limiter was turned off by Aoi, they were able to read his thoughts. It turned out that they were looking for a key to enter the main center of the ship. Then Aoi and Shiho worked together to break through the Kiyosuke ship's security system. One by one, his friends were defeated by them. Until finally, they managed to take over the ship. After seeing the Pandra members defeated by the Asper girls, Hinamiya immediately infiltrated another room to carry out his mission. But before he could do that, Kiyosuke managed to catch him. Then Hinamiya and Kiyosuke took the object the Esper girls used to take over the ship. But because the object's molecular bonds are too strong, their ability can't even break it. In the end, Kiyosuke planned to infiltrate the Babel ship alone, but Hinamiya wanted to go with him. Arriving at the ship, Hinamiya and Kiyosuke immediately went to free the members locked in a room. Not long after, the three Esper girls realized this. Kiyosuke told Hinamiya to get a remote that was used to control the ship while he would face the three Esper girls alone. Hinamiya immediately left, and with all his might, he took the remote from the hands of a woman named Tsubomi Fujiko. She is the director of the Babel members who have tremendous power. Finally, he managed to defeat her by using his ability to temporarily eliminate Fujiko's Esper power. Here, it is known that Hinamiya can remove the power of an Asper by touching it. When he touches the Asper, his opponent, the Asper cannot use its power anywhere and anytime for an indefinite period of time. After he managed to seize the remote, Hinamiya immediately destroyed it, and Kiyosuke's ship was recaptured. After that, from behind came Minamoto who was pointing a gun at Hinamiya. Fortunately, he was taken away by Kiyosuke. Arriving at the ship, Magi gave the key to Hinamiya as a form of their trust. On the other hand, the Babel members did not seem to have given up and kept trying to arrest Pandra members. They used all the abilities of the three Esper women to pull Kiyosuke's ship again. Until Kiyosuke had to fight them again. Here, they tell that Pandra's goal is not only to save Esper's captured by humans, but they want to create a new world for Esper's with Akashi Kaoru, who is currently battling Kiyosuke as the queen. That's why there is a stop on the ship that will one day be used for the queen. On the other hand, Kiyosuke, fighting against the three Asper girls, started to activate his limiter to destroy their formation. Then there was a clash of forces in the seawater between their ships, until finally, he managed to defeat them. Kiyosuke's ship members immediately redirected the ship's path and activated the ESP converter with maximum power, and used psychokinesis so that their ship could fly without hitting the bridge in the sea. They created a portal to escape from there. Meanwhile, the three Asper girls were crying because they couldn't catch the Kiyosuke ship members and failed to carry out their mission. They took their frustration out on Sakaki because he didn't do anything. At the end of the anime's second part, Minamoto says that Kiyosuke must not die first. This third part begins with Kiyosuke and his members who stop at a place to take care of something while repairing their ship damaged by the previous attack. Kiyosuke ordered a man named Muscle, 
one of his members, to oversee the ship repair process. On the other hand, all Kiyosuke's members visit a market to shop for later supplies on the ship. Suddenly, Yugi Ri wants to go alone without them. Finally, they ask Tinamiya to follow her to look after her. After walking for a while, Yugi Ri saw a shop selling various talismans. But because she had no money, she felt very sad. Luckily Hinamiya came and gave her the talisman. Then she wants to enter an amusement park, and he must be willing to accompany her. Elsewhere, Kiyosuke turns himself into a doctor and enters a hospital. After that, he went into a room to check himself. The scene returned to Yugiri and Hinamiya. There, Yugiri couldn't come in because a band said high-level aspers were forbidden to enter. With Hinamiya's power, they were finally able to enter the playground. She seemed happy playing various rides in the arena. But without Hinamiya's knowledge, it turns out that two men are following them. After being caught by Hinamiya, it turns out that the two people are Minamoto and Sakaki. Then he asked what they wanted. They offered him to capture Kiyosuke. He refuses, but they threaten him to leak information to Pandora that Hinamiya is a spy from the United States. Hearing that, he felt very anxious. Then, Hinamiya asked them why the Babel organization targeted the Pandora organization. They explained that when Kiyosuke became a former member of the Japanese government's special forces shortly before the war ended, he was betrayed by its leader. As a sense of revenge, Kiyosuke slaughtered his group mates. Not only that, but Kiyosuke killed many important members of the Babel organization, which was formerly formed to be a protector for the Espers. From then on, he did not believe in the Esper Protection Organization or other ordinary humans. But Hinamiya couldn't believe their explanation yet, but they kept persuading him and saying that this was done for Kiyosuke's good. On the other hand, after Yugi rewatched a show, she saw a little boy crying alone because he was separated from his parents. With her strength, she helps the child find his parents' whereabouts. But when she managed to find the child's parents, they thanked her and instead were frightened by Yugi Ri's presence and left her. The people around looked at her with disdain. She felt very sad and scared. Then two men guarding the amusement park came up and touched her hand. Yugi Ri unconsciously released her asper power, so that all the iron in the vehicle turned into very terrible creatures. Even though it was all an illusion, everyone in that place immediately fled in fear. Fortunately, Hinamiya, who noticed this, immediately approached her and brought her to her senses. After Yugi Ri woke up, it turned out that all Pandra members were already in front of her. Then, everyone who was there looked back at Yugi Ri with a cynical look that made her feel scared. Not wanting any more fuss, Hinamiya and her immediately left from there. That night when they get together, Hinamiya asks why they often say that we are all family. Then Mamaji explained that an attack on her place killed her entire family when she was a child, and it is known that the people who killed her were ordinary people from the military. Then, when Mamaji wanted to be killed by them, Luckily, Kiyosuke and his friends came to help her. There was a small Fujiura who had been saved by him. Then he invited Mamaji to go with him. At that time, Kiyosuke said that it was very difficult to become an Asper on the battlefield because Asper might be used or killed. If Mamaji wanted to avenge them, then Kiyosuke would help her. But if she wants a peaceful life, he can give it too. From then on, Mamaji joined Kiyosuke and became his new family. Likewise, the other members here felt the same as her. She was very grateful to him for saving her first. She said that today is Kiyosuke's birthday, and they will celebrate it joyfully. <laughs> Kiyosuke felt very happy to see the presence of the entire members of his ship. One by one, they gave gifts to him, including Yugiri who turned out to be buying the talisman to give as a birthday present to Kiyosuke. He felt happy with all the gifts from them. Kiyosuke told them that he had gone to the hospital to have his own body checked. Here it is revealed that his life is not long. On the other hand, Hinamiya was still confused about who Kiyosuke was. He wondered if this Kiyosuke was good or evil. Hinamiya immediately remembered the first time he met his boss, Alan Walsh, from the United States ESP Investigation Department. After the party, Hinamiya went to his room and communicated with Alan. Hinamiya then reported his mission back to him, and he ordered Hinamiya to find Pandra's tools they needed. On the other hand, Kiyosuke and his members decide to return to Japan to steal a tool developed by the Comerican Graham company called ECM. The tool is to eliminate the ability of the Esper. Even though the tool was annoying, they still had to steal it to get the information there. While resting, Hinamiya played billiards with Kiyosuke's friends, then he asked why Babel hated them so much. They answered that this has a history. They asked him to ask Kiyosuke this directly, but he didn't want to do that because he feared Kiyosuke would be angry with him. Then suddenly, Yugi Ri woke up and approached them to look for Hinamiya. She wanted him to sleep with her again and read her a story. After that, he wanted to put the storybook back into the library when Yugi Ri was asleep. But accidentally, there was a photo that fell from inside the book. 
The photo was a portrait of Kiyosuke and his friends who were still members of the Japanese military. The photo shows Fujiko with Kiyosuke. Then, Kiyosuke entered the library and took a book, and the spirit of a man named Utsumi appeared, where Utsumi was one of his friends when he was in the military. Then, Kiyosuke gave a picture to Utsumi, where in the picture, there was a tool embedded in his ship. That tool was the brain of someone named Ihachigo who died in the war. Apparently, the brain is not an ordinary brain because it has the ability of precognition and telepathy. With this ability, he can predict the possibilities that will happen to mankind. Thanks to that brain, Kiyosuke and his members managed to survive when they were about to be captured. Then Kiyosuke asked Utsumi if something happened. He wanted Utsumi to take care of it. By showing the scar on his head, Kiyosuke vowed to eradicate other ordinary humans in this world. Then Utsumi felt someone's presence behind him. Luckily, Hinamiya managed to escape. But because of that, his necklace was left there and was found by Kiyosuke. Hinamiya was so worried. The following day, Kiyosuke returned to meet Hinamiya, pushed him down into the sea, and then returned the necklace. When he wanted to leave, Hinamiya asked if killing all the common people was right. Then Kiyosuke replied, which side would he choose if that was the case? Hearing his answer, Hinamiya was silent. Then at night, Hinamiya secretly called Alan Walsh and told him that he would move to take Ihachigo's brain tomorrow. He asked Alan to tell all personnel and keep an eye on him. Hinamiya will leak to Babel that Kiyosuke will steal the ECM device so that he can distract Kiyosuke while he is stealing the brain. In addition, he requested that Alan Walsh not tell the children, because if they appear, then there will be big problems later. The next day, Kiyosuke and the other members moved to carry out the mission. But because Babel already knew their plan, Kiyosuke was blocked by them. On the other hand, Hinamiya secretly returns to the Pandra ship, which is assisted by Sakaki on a motorbike because they have the same goal. At the same time, Kiyosuke realized that Babel was just a diversion for him. Then he chose to return to his ship and protect the other Aspurs and Ihachigo's brains. But on the way, he met Aoi who was following him. She tells him their ship will soon be destroyed because she had heard Sakaki and Minamoto's conversation predict it. He said that actually, Minamoto just wanted to protect Pandra. Then Kiyosuke replied that if he stayed here, what about his entire members on the ship? Aoi couldn't even answer it, but she still forced him to come with her. He felt very angry and immediately activated his unlimited power and defeated her. On the other hand, Hinamiya, who had arrived on the ship, accidentally ran into Yugiri. He told her to go back to sleep. After he managed to find the whereabouts of Ihachigo's brain, he immediately called Alan Walsh and told him. Alan Walsh, who heard this, immediately sent his team to find the location of the Pandra ship. But Hinamiya asked him not to send military members there. Because on this ship, there are only children. When Hinamiya wanted to stop that brain, suddenly Kiyosuke appeared behind him. Finally, Kiyosuke realized that Hinamiya was an investigator from the United States. He said that Hinamiya's eyes reminded him of someone who had killed him in the past. Even now, he will take his revenge on Hinamiya. Then he showed Hinamiya the gunshot mark on his head. In the fourth part, the scene begins with Kiyosuke telling Hinamiya about his past. He said that when he first entered Japan, he was a child. He meets Fujiko, a woman with the same Asper powers as him. He was going to be adopted by Fujiko's father because his parents had died. At that time, he became acquainted with Fujiko. She said she considered him as her sibling and promised to always be together. At that time, Fujiko's father annoyed Kiyosuke with his joke, so he made the bag at Fujiko's father's feet fall without touching it. It was then that he knew that he had Asper powers. When Kiyosuke arrives at Fujiko's house, he writes a letter to his father and hopes he can hear it in heaven. Then Fujiko came and pranked him by taking the letter. However, she was surprised when Kiyosuke managed to retrieve the paper without touching it. She was confused because her power could not be used against him. Suddenly, the military came into Kiyosuke's room and asked him and Fujiko to join them as an Asper army unit they had just formed. Where members who have joined are people who have Asper powers. They said that the military wanted the Aspurs to be recognized as saviors of the world, not as monsters. But Fujiko refused because she thought the military only wanted to use their power to control a country and simultaneously create a war. Because Fujiko didn't believe their words, she asked Kiyosuke to leave them. But the captain didn't give up on getting them because they would join by themselves. In the evening, Kiyosuke and Fujiko thought about the captain's words earlier. Unexpectedly, they both changed their minds and chose to join the military. After one year, they joined and tried to promote the group little by little. They made a short film that was shown in theaters. The film contains an army of ESP units with various abilities. After the film was over, they went home immediately. While on his way home, Kiyosuke, who was walking, accidentally bumped into a male policeman, and finally, he was scolded by him. Then, Fujiko and her friends came to defend him. She threw the cop with an ice cream in his face. 
The policeman was furious and wanted to slap her, but because she managed to kick him, the policeman bounced and hit a naval officer. As a result of this incident, the ESP unit finally received punishment for not being allowed to carry out its duties. It makes Fujiko feel guilty about her unit team. On the other hand, a leader named Satome tried to persuade other military parties to consider the ESP unit being demobilized. He says that this punishment is just wasting their talent. He explained that their strength would be very useful to protect this country. But instead of feeling sorry for them, the military leadership didn't approve of that and thought their existence was just a bunch of monsters. The military leader's words were heard by one of the Asper members who were turning himself into a bird. After the Asper members found out about this, they felt angry. One member even wanted to detonate a bomb at the military. Finally, Satome offered military leaders to hold a duel with the Navy. If they win against the Navy, they will be a pride for the military. But if they lose, their unit will be ready to disband. After that, Satome gave the announcement to the ESP unit and asked Kiyosuke to do the duel, where this duel will be done one-on-one. -on -one. The duel they mean is that the Navy can attack a spur using military aircraft in the air while a spur only relies on their strength. Kiyosuke trains with his members until his body is injured. Seeing this, Fujiko feels guilty for him and continues to encourage him. The next day, when Fujiko was aboard a flying military plane, she talked with two Navy men on a different plane. She wanted to warn them, but she instead got insults from them. Then, they immediately dueled with Kiyosuke who had flown in front of the man's military plane. The plane continued to chase him while continuing to shoot at him. The members of the ESP unit continued to monitor Kiyosuke's movements from a ship. They saw that his movement was very weak and could be shot. When Kiyosuke was in a depressed position, he couldn't bring out his abilities. No matter how strong he is, he is just a child. Meanwhile, Kiyosuke, who was being chased by the military plane, had a hard time finding an opening to attack him. His body then felt heavier as it flew. A black shadow wrapped around his legs when he looked at his feet. Instantly, he remembered his father's message not to use that power. His father didn't want Kiyosuke to use his power because he would be used by others. Because at that time, his mother died due to being the research object. But since Kiyosuke had accepted that he was an Asper, he didn't heed his father's advice. He immediately got out of the black shadow and tried to find an opening to attack the plane. Not long after, Kiyosuke turned around and shot the plane with a gum gun at the plane's window. In the end, he managed to win the duel. Then he thought it seemed his father didn't want him to win the duel. But suddenly, a foreign submarine appeared from the sea. The ESP unit approached the ship. But soon, the ship opened fire on them and they retreated. After that, three dolphins appeared. It turned out that the ship's purpose was to kill all the dolphins. But the dolphin uses telepathy and communicates to Kiyosuke that they are a spur animals. Then from behind, a torpedo approached the three dolphins and managed to kill one of them. The ESP unit tried to detonate two torpedoes still chasing the rest of the dolphins using grenades. But unfortunately, one of the torpedoes managed to escape. Without thinking, Kiyosuke immediately chased after the torpedo assisted by his military friend. Fortunately, the torpedo was successfully stopped using its power, so the two dolphins survived. Finally, they gathered on a military ship to congratulate Kiyosuke. Seeing his success, Fujiko feels motivated to continue fighting with them. On the other hand, one of the Asper members escorted the two dolphins while doing telepathy. The dolphin said that compared to the dolphins, the death of the ESP unit would come soon. Several years after the Second World War, all of the ESP unit comrades were killed, and all that was left was Kiyosuke. He was talking to a captain in a room. But suddenly, the captain pointed a gun at him. The captain said he didn't want Aspers to exist in the world and only thought of them as monsters. In addition, the captain said he was afraid Kiyosuke's strength would be known by the enemy and took it to be on the enemy's side. Then the captain fired a bullet at him three times until he died and said the captain was proud of him. After Kiyosuke died, the captain congratulated him. Because according to the captain, Kiyosuke and his colleagues died in an honorable way. Then suddenly, the dead Kiyosuke woke up with a face covered in blood from gunshot wounds and eyes like a ghost. He immediately killed the captain with a shot. From then on, he couldn't trust ordinary people and thought his spurs were monsters. After Kiyosuke finished remembering his past, he tried to attack Hinamiya to kill him. His attack managed to make him fall. After that, Hinamiya immediately pointed a gun at Kiyosuke. But he had no intention of killing him because his only goal was to take Ihachigo's brain. Then Hinamiya approached Kiyosuke and tried to turn off Ihachigo's brain work. This makes the presence of the Pandra ship in camouflage visible. Then, Alan Walsh immediately sent troops led by Satome to approach the ship. Then, Satome asked Kiyosuke to immediately hand over Ihachigo's brain to them. Satome said that Kiyosuke's members should be monitored because he doesn't want monsters threatening humans to roam freely. After hearing that, 
Kiyosuke's anger rose. However, Kiyosuke didn't know that the voice he heard earlier was Satome. Soon, Alan Walsh's troops attacked the Pandra ship with a barrage of fire. Kiyosuke immediately got out of the ship and attacked Alan Walsh's troops alone. He killed off the United States soldiers with mounting resentment and anger. That incident reminded Kiyosuke of the first time he fought. But it turns out that this is a diversion so the soldiers can enter the Pandra ship and try to steal Ihachigo's brain. In the fifth part, the United States soldiers enter the Pandra ship. They get into the ship to capture all the Pandra members and Ihachigo's brains. Luckily, one of the female members was able to stop the soldiers. Then she asked the children to hide while she faced them. But unfortunately, she was defeated after the soldier activated the ECM device so that the Esper's power could not be used. After the Pandra members found out that the ship was being attacked, they immediately came toward the ship. On the other hand, the soldiers were already in Ihachigo's room and prepared to take him away. Here, Hinamiya is annoyed with Alan Walsh because he sent military troops to the ship and made a mess. In addition, the United States soldiers captured Yugiri and took her away. Even though she fought back, she was knocked unconscious because the ECM device was activated at a very high level. After Magi, Fujiura and Mamaji arrived on the ship, they immediately went to the children's shelter. Luckily, they looked fine, but they were very scared. While in another place, Hinamiya was carrying Ihachigo and was surprised to see Yugiri who had been caught. It upset him because Alan Walsh had broken his promise. Alan Walsh explained that the reason for capturing Yugiri was to exterminate the monsters disguised as Aspurs. Because he believes that one day the Aspurs will lose control and make the world go into chaos. But Hinamiya denied that because Yugiri wasn't a monster. After being together for so long, he realizes that Aspur is just an ordinary human with feelings and kindness. But Alan Walsh didn't believe him. He shot Hinamiya right in the chest. <laughs> After that, they took Yugiri away from there in a helicopter. At the same time, Kiyosuke, who finally managed to overcome the attacks from the soldiers, returned to his ship. He became very weak because his strength was almost exhausted. Arriving on the ship, Magi approached Kiyosuke to encourage him to get up immediately. Fortunately, thanks to Magi's words, Kiyosuke's condition improved. He immediately flew to activate his unlimited mode so he could withstand attacks from the soldiers. When Kiyosuke was activating his unlimited mode, he suddenly remembered that all his Asper friends had died from being used by the military. His vengeance aroused his anger to the peak. He destroyed the paramilitary vehicles in the sea and air with all his strength, until there was a huge explosion from the military vehicles. Meanwhile, it turns out that Hinamiya is still alive because Alan Walsh's bullet only hit a necklace that he kept in his jacket. Then he saw Kiyosuke, who was flying, looking exhausted to stop the attack from the remaining soldiers. After Kiyosuke started getting really weak, he fell into the water unconscious. When Kiyosuke fell, he suddenly heard his father's voice saying that this was all because he didn't want to listen to his father's advice. Fortunately, at that time, Hinamiya and Fujiko appeared to help him. After that, Kiyosuke was taken to Fujiko's house to be treated there. After waking up, Fujiko immediately asked him why the United States soldiers attacked their ship to destroy it, but he didn't want to answer it because they had different goals now. On the other hand, Hinamiya immediately released a chip in his brain so they wouldn't know his whereabouts anymore. He was assisted by Babel when releasing the chip. After that, they immediately went to Kiyosuke's place to meet him. Inamiya had time to ask Kaoru who the Asper Queen would lead, but Kaoru replied that he didn't know because the plan came from Kiyosuke. At the same time, other Pandra members managed to track down Yugiri's whereabouts from the video footage found by Magi. They were very happy that Yugiri was still alive and wondered why they had arrested her. In addition, they just found out that Hinamiya is a United States soldier. Those who knew about it immediately felt very disappointed. They planned to go to the headquarters of the United States soldiers to save Yugiri. On the other hand, when Hinamiya came to Kiyosuke's place, he was very angry with Hinamiya for what he had done. But Kiyosuke harbored his anger and asked him who was the person from behind the ship who called them monsters. Feeling very angry, he forced Hinamiya to tell him immediately. But when Hinamiya told him, Kiyosuke's anger suddenly spiked because he knew who it was. Because that person turned out to be Satome who had shot him first. But somehow, Satome can come back to life after Kiyosuke killed him first. Kiyosuke, who had not yet recovered but was harboring great anger, finally fell unconscious. After Hinamiya and the children checked, his condition was very worrying. It is said that he will die soon. Kaioru immediately donated his blood to Kiyosuke, because that's the only way he can survive. On the other hand, Fujiko explains to Hinamiya that the person who is the boss is Satome, who mercilessly kills Kiyosuke and his members. It made Kiyosuke feel very vengeful. 
Fujiko said that she almost became a victim at that time. However, when she was shot, it only hit her arm, and she immediately fled to establish a new organization called Babel. At night, Kiyosuke secretly leaves Fujiko's house to avenge Satome, but Babel soon discovered his actions so they immediately went to look for his whereabouts. When Kaoru found out about Kiyosuke's whereabouts, she immediately stopped him. But Kiyosuke said his members would be in danger if he didn't leave now. He didn't want his members to be killed by Satome. Then he left Kaoru. On the other hand, Satome wants to kill Kiyosuke because he can see the future of Aspurs. At that time, there will be a very great rebellion between ordinary humans and Aspurs, where the Aspur leaders are Kiyosuke and Kaoru. There was also Yugiri who was being brainwashed with a tool. The sixth part begins with Kiyosuke who is walking alone to go to Satome's location. Not long after, Hinami approached him and offered him a car ride. Hinami said that he would help him because Satome had kidnapped Yugiri. With a very upset feeling, Kiyosuke was forced to accept the ride. When he got into the car, Hinamiya immediately returned the limiter necklace to him. Then they immediately headed to Satome's place. Once arrived, Hinamiya and Kiyosuke managed to get into Alan Walsh's room. They asked about Yugiri's whereabouts, but Satome wanted to shoot himself instead of giving them information. Luckily, Kiyosuke could withstand the bullet, so he didn't die. Satome finally wanted to take them to the room where Yugiri was. Arriving at the room, it turned out that she was not there. They feel angry because they have been deceived. Then suddenly, a loudspeaker rang. It turned out to be Satome's voice saying that he had been waiting for Kiyosuke for a long time. He said he was still alive because the United States soldiers saved him. With an annoyed tone, Kiyosuke asked about the real purpose of Satome doing all this. Then a reflection of the image appeared, showing the destruction of the world in the future. Satome explains that he will eliminate all Asper in the world. And to do all that, he plans to kill Kaoru and all the monster like Asper's first. Of course, to do that, he would use Yugiri's power by controlling her brain. Suddenly, several flying robots appeared behind the door that intended to kill Kiyosuke. Inamiya swiftly managed to help Kiyosuke and protect him with his strength, then they managed to escape. But the robot was still chasing them, so they stopped to destroy the robot first. Inamiya took the weapon that was there and fired at the robots. Until finally, they were surrounded because the number of robots continued to grow. So Kiyosuke was forced to activate his unlimited mode to attack them. But Hinamiya forbade it because doing so could harm him. Fortunately, their friends immediately came to help him deal with the robots until they were finally rescued. After returning to the ship, Yoharu, one of Kiyosuke's members, asked Hinamiya why he returned after betraying their group. Hinamiya replies that his purpose is only to save Yugiri and make amends. After hearing that, Yoharu smiled and didn't get angry with Hinamiya. But suddenly, Yoharu hit him for betraying them. After that, they gathered to discuss a trip to the United States to save Yugiri. Long story short, when Kiyosuke, his members, and Hinami arrived and managed to meet Yugiri, she attacked them, because her brain has been controlled by Satome. Satome, who saw this, was overjoyed and said that the future of the Asper was coming to an end. He ordered his men, disguised as police officers, to arrest Kiyosuke when he saw him. Meanwhile, Hinamiya, who saw Yugiri from a distance, immediately followed her. But he was instead arrested by the police who were guarding there. Fortunately, two Babel members came to save him. Finally, he was released by the police. Without thinking, Hinamiya immediately went to follow Yugiri. But unfortunately, it was too late because she brought out her abilities so she could control everyone there to kill the Aspurs. Fortunately, thanks to the power of Hinamiya and his two friends, Yugiri couldn't control it. Knowing this, Kiyosuke immediately approached Yugiri to try to stop her. But unfortunately, because the power of her hypothesis was too strong, Kiyosuke was finally caught in his own illusion which made him almost defeated. She brought him back to remember his past memories which made him feel very depressed. Until its peak Kiyosuke was forced to use his unlimited mode, thus making Yugiri's strength suppressed by his strength until everything returned to normal. Unfortunately, because his condition was not good, Kiyosuke couldn't control his strength then Yugiri was blown away. Kiyosuke asked his members to leave him immediately. Hinamiya, who couldn't bear to see him like that, tried to approach him. After struggling to break through Kiyosuke's power, Hinamiya finally managed to grab his body. Hinamiya immediately absorbs Kiyosuke's power with his abilities. Fortunately, he could stop Kiyosuke, even though he did not think he could stop it. But due to exhaustion, Hinamiya fell unconscious. A few days after the incident, the city is now back to normal. At that time, Satome, sitting in the garden reading the newspaper, was visited by Kiyosuke to avenge him. 
But Kiyosuke did not kill him. Instead, he erased all of Satome's memories so that he would be tormented for the rest of his life. On the other hand, after his goal was fulfilled, Hinamiya decided to leave Pandora and return to his old life as a traveler. It makes all members sad, especially Yugiri who already has a close relationship with him. She thanked him for saving Kiyosuke. Meanwhile, Kiyosuke, knowing that Hinamiya was leaving, asked him to keep the necklace, because he has been considered by Kiyosuke as an honorary member of Pandora. The moral that can be learned from this anime is not to be careless in helping someone. Moreover, we don't know what the real problem is between them, because taking the wrong step can be fatal to someone's life.